Brendan Taylor here. I'm with the one and only Chris Algieri. First of all, Chris, nice to see you as always. Good to see you too. Good yes. Good to be seen as well. Yes. Uh, we're here. It's a, mo it's a momentous occasion. Ryan and Tank uh, wanted to pick your brain about it. You know, how do you see Ryan versus Tank? Um, I mean, first off, just I mean, I just got in, so fight week is, is well underway. And uh, yeah, it's got, it's got a big fight Vegas feel, you know, which is, which is great. We don't, it's not even a title fight yet it has the magnitude of, of a massive, massive fight, which is good to see. You know, it's, it's interested in this kind of fight. You got young guys who are putting their, their, their O's on the line, taking the huge risk to fight each other at this stage of their careers, which has been rare as of late, unfortunately. Hopefully this will change the tide and we'll see more of these young guys taking risks early on. Uh, I think it's gonna help both guys, you know, in whatever, whatever happens. Okay. Well, what do you think makes each fighter like stand out style-wise, you know, like, uh... They're both really special talents, but from your vantage point, what, what do you feel separates Tank and Ryan from their peers? Yeah, so I mean, I'll, I'll start with Ryan first because his pictures are looking at me right there. Um, I mean, he's got he's got speed and power. His, his left hook is incredibly fast. It's, he literally has one punch power. I think he can ice anyone in those divisions. Um, he's tall, he's long for the weight class. I think with this fight more than maybe other fights, he's got a specific kind of chip on his shoulder that I think Davis brings out of him. And uh, so that he's a dynamic puncher. Like I said, he's very quick. He's explosive. Um, he, he's, he's very motivated for this fight, which is, which is big. He's huge for the weight class. Um, and then you got Tank. I mean, Tank, you just got to look at the numbers, man. The guy is a knockout artist. And he has the title of throwing the least amount of punches for a championship fighter. Yet he has a, a 90 plus percent knockout percentage. So that tells you that you know he really does have nuclear in those fists, and he believes in his power because he'll he'll be in a fight losing. He'll be down rounds yeah. as he's analyzing and collecting data. I think his boxing IQ is a lot higher than people give him credit for. So um, yeah, I mean they're 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 so different in terms of their styles and their whole is, approach. You know, like yeah, everything's different. Yeah, yeah. Everything about them is different. The yeah. way they look, the way they act, the way they move, the way they fight, uh, the way they approach a fight, uh, the way they act in fights. So it makes it that much more interesting. Okay. No, Chris. Uh, as far as like Ryan, right? He's a taller. He's a taller fighter. Kind of has the Alexis Arguello body type. Yeah. I know you're a big Arguello yeah, guy. Huge um, Do you do you think is there a path to victory? Maybe him outboxing Tank. Is is, is that a possibility? You see? Because everyone's saying knockout. If he does yeah, win, you know. I, I would I would be very surprised if, if Ryan was that because Ryan doesn't have an authoritative jab. He's got a pulling jab, and he, he uses it more as a range finder to land a left hook. Uh, I mean, there's been a lot of talk from Davis saying, "Oh, he's a one-dimensional fighter." He kind of is, and, but it's a damn good dimension. That left hook is, is, is a nightmare. So, uh, but he uses that that pawing jab to kind of figure out where the guy's going to be, and then he'll he'll, he'll pull him with that shot. With the length and the height that he has, he can still pull away and land a uh, land a, a good hook. So, um, in terms of him going out there in a boxing tank, the thing about boxers is, and I've had long conversations with Paul Wanaji about this. On pro box, to, yeah. To be a bo well, we're, we're friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. To be a boxer. Like in the Churchill sense of I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna jab, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna stick, I'm gonna you gotta be in phenomenal condition. Your body needs to be attuned to that. I'm not so sure Ryan trains like that. He's definitely never done it in a fight. Being able to move on his feet and use his jab and sticking and moving and slipping and sliding and and and, uh, and fainting, I just I would be really surprised if he would do that. If he did, he's been working on it in secret. <laughs> I don't see that in any of his videos. Yeah, it's not that's not on tape. No, you know? no, no. And it's, like I said, it's, it's, for twelve rounds is a long time very long time. so if you haven't been doing it in fights I don't, I don't think you're gonna pull it out in the biggest way okay i know they're selling this fight as like the biggest fight in boxing and these these guys the two guys in the division right but you know this guy named devin handy has got all the belts uh how, how, who, who do you think would have a better chance against devin if, if they were to fight him um that's a good question think about that but still focus on this fight. Or better, or better yet maybe how how do you feel like they'd match up stylistically with Devin because Devin's a technical boxer he's long he's rangy I think Devin I think Devin has a good chance to beat both men actually um, I'd rather see Devin and Ryan fight at 40 mm. honestly than, than 35 because I know they both struggle to make 35 uh, so I don't think we'll see the best version of either man at 35 um, and then Davis and, and Amy I would like to see that fight that's a and that's a, for me that's another pick and fight I don't know who exactly won that fight. I would probably lean a little bit towards Haney. Um, I'm usually on the side of the boxers when it comes to big yeah. fights, boxers versus punchers. But like I said, Davis has really high boxing IQ as well. I'm a huge Davis fan, by the way. I'm actually a huge fan of both these guys. But uh, I'm a big fan of Davis. I've been saying his praises for a long time. But um, 
Yeah, that's a that's that's an interesting thought. I got I got to I got to sit on. Yeah, I got to marinate on that one. Yeah. So I know if you if you have to marinate on that one, you put you probably have to marinate marinate on Shakur versus Devin too, right? Because I know Shakur. Dude, don't even get me started. Shakur, Shakur's because Shakur, I, the Shakur is my guy in the division. You know, I, I, I think Shakur beats everybody. Me too. I don't need to think about that one. Yeah, I think Shakur beats everybody. Because he's got. I, don't, a, I, don't, I I think Shakur is is close to the next Floyd Mayweather as we're gonna get. I think he's going to be around for a very long time. He's gonna stay undefeated. He's gonna be in multiple weight classes. I think his best fights are gonna be at 47. Mm. I think I, I see him running all the way up. Really? There. Yes. I think I think we're gonna see him around for a long time in a lot of weight classes. You think his body's gonna fill up enough to be a strong 47 pounder? He's, he's a big guy already. Yeah. Uh, I remember him when he was fighting at 30 the first time I met him. And I'm like, oh man, like this. He's, yeah, yeah. How did, first of all, it's different when you're young. Your tissues, you can make those <laughs> those weights when you're a lot easier when you're younger. But uh, yeah, he, he. I think he can fill out really well, and he has been, and he's showing more power too. Okay. Yeah, the fight um, I'm really excited about unboxing is the Inoue Fulton fight, which yeah. I know is probably one Huge you're excited fight. about Huge as well. Yep. Well, well, how do you see that one? Because I, I, I wanted this fight to happen because I I believe, and I've seen it, Fulton has everything you would need to beat in a fight. And that's a, that's a massive statement because anyway, he's, he's, he's living up to a nickname. Special fighter. He's the monster. He is a monster. He is. I was really taken aback when he knocked out my friend Amito Donaire the way he did in the Two rematch. rounds. Yeah, I called that fight for, for ESPN and I was, I was blown away with how... Um, how, con how, how controlled he was. He didn't he didn't throw that right hand until the very end of the round. He dropped the go immediately. Then he finishes with a left hook in the next round. Incredible, incredible stuff. But Fulton has that East Coast Philly style that gives guys like that trouble. If he can deal with the power of Inouye, especially early on, I, I would favor Fulton with that fight. And he's a naturally bigger guy as well, right? Much bigger guy. Yeah. He's, he's kind of a tweener. Because he was on his way up to 26, mm -hmm. decided to hang back and go, say, at 22. And then Inouye's on his way up from 18 to 22. So this is the biggest guy he's going to fight. Okay. Apart from the power, uh, what other special attributes do you see in Inouye as a, as a former fighter? You know, I mean, his technique is, is impeccable. His hand position, his, 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 the way he throws his punches in terms of... There's, there's no, we call it, there's no fat on the punches. He doesn't, there's nothing to see. It's very difficult to see the shots coming. A lot of his power comes from that. He hits guys with shots that are very tricky that they don't see. Those are the shots that hurt you the most because he doesn't waste anything. It's one of those guys you're in front of him and just, the glove just gets bigger until it hits you. you know, shoot, there's no, there's no tell. He turns at the last second. The very last second. And, and uh, yeah, he generates a tremendous amount of power. He lines up his bones really, really well. Um, and then it, also his, his, his setups, his strategy, his traps that he sets. What he did to the Donaire was incredible. He was, I was really surprised when he came out of the second round, he was winging left hooks. I'm like, he's hooking with a hooker. This is a very dangerous thing because Benito can knock out anybody. Yeah. Hook. And for him to throw hooks, I'm like, this is, I even said it on the air, I'm like, it's not a good idea to start hooking with Benito Donaire. But he was doing it to set up the right hand. That was, it was very impressive. So there was a method behind the madness. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Very smart fighter. Okay. Well, Chris, I don't, I don't hold you much longer, but there's any final message you want to give to the box world about fight week here or anything you got going on? I'll tell everybody to tune in if you're around, try and get here. I know, I know the tickets are crazy and probably sold out, but uh, this, is, this has got that big fight feel. And if you have any friends who are not really big boxing people, bring them on down so they can get the feel for it and they'll be boxing fans for life. All right, there you have it. Chris Algieri. Thank you.